welcome back to Let's Play Jane's Fighters Anthology. Today we will be showcasing the venerable B-52 Stratofortress. Now this plane has been, like the C-130, has been in service since the 50s um, and it's been America's primary strategic bomber ever since its introduction. Oh, uh, let's see. And uh, that's always been its primary purpose. During the Cold War, they were on standby alert for, um, for you know, if World War III started, they were going to launch off and bomb the Soviet Union. And really, that's all the B-52 is when you boil it down, is it's a big, slow bomb truck. Uh, originally, it was designed to haul in... Um, You know, dumb bombs of the nuclear and conventional type. Nowadays, it's been refitted for uh, to make them survivable. They now have uh, long-range standoff missiles for both nuclear and conventional attack. And uh, actually, just as of about a week ago, as of when I made this recording, the Air Force was looking the. I mean, they've been looking into re-engineing these things forever. I don't know why they haven't re-engined them, because, my God, the engines they have on them right now are so ancient. And I, I feel like they could do a lot better if they just took, like, four engines off a of 747 and replaced the 8 on the B-52 with four, like, 747 engines. You know, I feel like that would do wonders for their fuel efficiency, but maybe there's... A reason, I'm sure there's a reason they haven't done that. Expense is probably, the upfront expense is probably one, even though they'd probably save them money in fuel efficiency and maintenance, but you know, I know that the nu nuclear deterrent mission has all sorts of special requirements. Like, I remember talking with a, uh, um, a tanker pilot from the Wisconsin Air National Guard, and uh, we were talking about the KC-46, and at least when they were... Uh, When they initially enter service, they will not be used for refueling nuclear bombers because I guess there's, uh, I know there's like certain requirements they have to meet, certain tests they have to undergo to certify themselves for the nuclear, for support of the nuclear mission. And one of them, you know, I don't know what they all are, of course, because I'm sure some of that's secret, but I know like one of them is EMP resistance, for example. Um, so, you know, that could be a reason why they haven't re-engined these things, but but the thing that really got me was that the Air Force was looking to vastly increase the amount of underwing ordnance they could carry by, like, they wanted, like, 20,000 pounds at a hard point, which, that means they want to drop something big from these guys. Really big. Uh... So, okay, so here's what our mission is going to be. We're going to assume, for simplicity's sake, since I can't actually get allied aircraft to do what I want them to do, we're going to assume there's aircraft with us that are sanitizing air defenses, or they've been pre-sanitized, whatever. Uh, we'll have some MiG-31s coming in to intercept us, and uh, we'll have four F-15s flying escort for us, and our job is to take out this supply base. Now you can see, yeah, even in the game, their internal default is slams. But as cool as it would be to just launch a bunch of slams and call it mission accomplished, I think it's even cooler to just. Okay, where are they? There they are. To just carpet bomb the whole damn place into oblivion. I really wish we could get the Mark 84 to sound like a three pack or something, but. Actually, I'm kind of curious. Oh, okay, I guess it's not compatible with that, but... Is that really the biggest thing we can put in here? Well, I mean, we, I guess we can put this guy. Uh, I don't want to use Russian stuff, so... We'll stick with the Mark 82 7 packs, and... Oh, right, so... The early versions of the B-52 up through... Up through the Gulf War had... Uh, 20 millimeter tail turret in the back. 
this is a relic of World War II and early post-World War II bomber design, where uh, you know bombers were expected to kind of be flying fortresses and defend themselves somewhat against aircraft. Although nowadays, you know, with combat being mostly missile-based, um, there's really no provision for that these days. Especially since the speed of fighters is so great. I mean, it was already hard to do in World War II with. Uh, Excuse me, with turboprop fighters, but you know, can you imagine in what it would have been like in Korea or Vietnam trying to, you know, you got like a MiG-17 coming after you. You're in a turret of a, you know, a B-24. or something. can you imagine trying? Even if you had the 20 mils, can you imagine trying to take down something that fast? You know, it's just damn near impossible. So that's why turrets have greatly fallen out of use. The Soviets held on to them longer than most, but even they stopped using them with the TU-160. So, with that, enough of my babbling. Well, for now, and we'll get into the mission. Oh, just a brief side note, though. You can see the ridiculous carry capacity here and the ridiculous internal fuel load since it is an intercontinental strategic bomber. So, now we'll get into the mission. Alright, so... 20 miles. Mission. We'll throw on uh, jammers. We'll, I'm sure those F-15s will take care of. Uh... Contact. Oh, it looks like they're already engaging the F-15s. Please advise. They're chaffing it up and getting with an AMRAM range. Looks like they're launching our salvo. They must have successfully spoofed the first wave of missiles. Yeah, look at that. Just right by. MiG-31s are firing back again. Contact, bandit, you're 12 o'clock, 10 miles, please advise. That was real close one. They're, they're really laying it on this F-15. <laughs> but he's just spoofing them left and right. Oh, okay, they got him that one, but... But these guys should be just about out of misses. Looks like the other F-15s are engaging. Uh, they got some hits on this guy. Ooh, those two are out. That just leaves one mate left. So I think they have that ball in hand. We'll have a win. We'll clear them to attack structures. We will open our bomb bay door. We will switch our bomb site. I guess someone's crashing beneath us. There it is, now we can see the, the target here. Oh, let's see if we can spot the bombs coming in. There they come. Look at all of them. Boom! We just fucking leveled that base with one pass, and we only used like a third of our ordnance. America, fuck yeah! Okay, so. That's the power of the B-52. So, whoever wingman disengaged, we were retired to the base of Tartu. We're only gonna have... Oh, 
all familiar. Uh, we'll head north. One eight mile, three o'clock. Okay, nice gentle turn. One six mile, two o'clock. And we should see the base coming up. Uh, just for. So, there's the tail cannon, nothing special. The, uh, just like with the AC-130, it'll kind of auto-lock it for you if you're locked onto a fighter. Uh, it'll, there's a cone upon which it'll kind of auto-lock, which I both like and dislike. On the one hand, I mean, you're not going to be able to target that thing and fly the aircraft at the same time. It would be great for, like, a multiplayer game if you could have someone in your tail gun position, but... But on the other hand, the computer targeting isn't always the best, especially when the target's the base. Or, you know, like we saw, where somehow, you know, our howitzer rounds in the AC-130 mission were just plowing into that hill, and if they just saved it up a little bit, we would have been hitting the, uh, our intended target. Okay, so... We're all about So, where to land? Nice landing gear. It's, it's probably good for now. Again, very large, docile aircraft. Not the most responsive, and certainly not maneuverable by any stretch of the imagination. But easy. Yeah, I like how it's trying to get us to land at the short runway. Yeah, no. And we have just about a perfect landing. And touchdown. Let's try to. Welcome home. You can see we're uh, a little too big for this airfield. You know, it's, uh, I like how we can see our shadow on the uh, bomb view there, but again, I think that's one of the biggest problems that I personally have with this game is how the scale is uh, scaling in the game is off by a considerable amount, to put it gently. But with that, that's this mission. You can see it takes, even with the brakes on, it's aircraft's got very heavy, got a lot of momentum, takes a long time to come down to a stop. You know, with aircraft, it's the speed. With this thing, it's just getting that mass to slow down. So with that, let's end the mission. Alright, so we successfully completed the mission. We destroyed 13 targets. We can see we actually destroyed 14 in that one pass. Uh, we spoofed the one missile launch on us because as we found out flying the Soviet aircraft or the Russian aircraft, their weapons are hugely nerfed in this game to a ridiculous degree. But I think that was a uh, pretty good showcase of the B-52. Actually, there's... Uh, one incident that I would be remiss to not recall, and that's um, during Desert Storm, there was a B-52. It was on a bombing run, and it was being escorted by, uh, I believe, an F-4G. You know, they're supposed to suppress enemy air defenses that might try to lock onto the B-52. And what happened is the F-4G mistook the radar. This was one of the last B-52s that actually had the tail gunner. They're all, all the ones in service now don't have them, but they mistook the uh, radar of the B-52, the radar that guides the tail turret, as, um, as an enemy SAM site. I don't know. I mean, I guess they were... I, I feel like they should have been able to tell that that SAM site was at, you know, 20,000, 40,000 feet or whatever in the air, but I guess thought didn't occur to them, or maybe their equipment weren't able you know, were 2D and they weren't able to detect altitude or something. Uh, so, so, and the B-52 in turn uh, mistook 
the F4 locking onto it as an attacking MIG. And what happened is they fired at each other. Um, obviously, the F4 was missed. They, they didn't hit the F4, but the F4 uh, launched a harm missile, which actually hit the rear of the, uh, the B-52, and it chewed it up to a fair amount, but the B-52 made it back safely. No one was hurt or killed in this, thank God. But uh, from that point on, that B-52, that specific B-52, has been renamed in harm's way. <laughs> but, but that's all for this episode. Uh, next episode, we'll be moving on to the second last aircraft in our Ukraine War Showcase, and that will be the B-1B Lancer Bomber. And uh, so, look forward to that next time. Thank you all for watching, and we'll see you then.